Hi Tokyo Tops, today we're at a very special venue called Venture Cafe Tokyo. We are going to join our first LGBT professional networking event, Fruits in Suits. Look at us, serving business bot in realness. Wait, you're probably wondering what exactly is Fruits in Suits. Let's find out. Andrew, why we are here today? Why you are in suits? Uh, we're coming to find husbands. Nani? That's not true. That's that is not true. what you're about. That is true. Because we are here as two successful social media entrepreneurs. Sure, and we might find some other successful. Our equal. Exactly. <laughs> so we are here for finding our husbands. So we are at Fruits and Suits, which is an LGBT networking event here in Tokyo. The community gathers together. We make some, meet some people, do some networking, and sort of expand our horizons from a very business point of view, as we can see today. We are looking all fancy, make the connections that we need to move up in the world. So it's kind of cool. Here's Michel, um, Nen Tang. Uh, my parents are actually refugees from Cambodia, so we're Cambodian Chinese. On the left side, we have Danny, founder and CEO of Boxu. Yes, that Boxu. Too bad he is taken already. But today's main character is Lauren Sam, co-founder of Fruits and Suits Tokyo. When we start our YouTube channel, it's, I feel like a lot of things that we already feel very difficult. For example, in the very beginning, like how we get into business, how we mm -hmm. interview bars, like without those connections. But looking at you, I feel like you check even more boxes as a mi minority, you know, in Tokyo. Like you're black if I'm allowed that's fine yeah to say that. I am yeah. black you're yes you're gay as well mm. so when you first start your business do you hit walls do you feel there are lots of obstacles for people like us or like you in Tokyo to find their own place to start their own career here that's a uh, an amazing question probably the biggest barrier to starting one's career or your own business are the walls that you put in front of yourself mm. the the way that you look at yourself and the way that you think about yourself and the way that you might put yourself down or feel insecure or feel that you're not enough in some way. So tackling those self-imposed barriers and those beliefs that hold you back and disempower you are probably the ones that are the most critical to dismantle and to really kind of figure out. And when I got here, a lot of people think when you come to Japan, like, oh, you'll never be Japanese or you'll never be accepted. You'll never belong, you know, yeah. all this other kind of crap. because. Belonging isn't it about really, I mean, some people will disagree, and you might get a lot of comments on this. <laughs> comment below. Comment, comment below. <laughs> but you know, the thing is like belonging doesn't rest in someone else's mind, it rests in your own mind. Mm. And so one of the ways that it kind of occurred to me, like one of the ways I kind of ch switched my thinking, for a long time I wanted to speak Japanese like a Japanese person. Mm. I wanted to behave like a Japanese person. I wanted to sort of really blend in as much as I could here in this country. I saw that as the way to succeed. But you know, when you try to fit in, you, you kind of pound out all the ways that you are you, mm -hmm. and you kind of do yourself a disservice. Celebrate what makes you you and makes you unique and different and bring that to the table. And so one day when I said, okay, I'm not, you know, Nihonji ni yoni hanashite mitai to omotte ru nakute, Loren rashiku hanashite miru Mm. Accepting that I can be myself here and I can meet people, build businesses, start organizations, help people as myself because me being myself is the way I bring value. What brought you to Japan? And also, like, did you learn Japanese prior uh, coming to Japan? Because lots of our viewers, they have concerns. Mm. They love Japan uh, you know, as a country. They're interested in the culture because learning the language if you're not in the environment, it's very hard for you to pick it up. It is. Um, in my undergraduate years, a long, long time ago, because she's an old girl, like a long time ago, uh, I studied both Japanese and Chinese. Mm -hmm. I did both at the same time, which was a mistake. Oh, why? <laughs> <laughs> because it's a lot of characters. Like the funny thing is like the Chinese, they're like, you just learned these 100 characters. Like, and with the Japanese, they're like, characters are so difficult. <laughs> the Chinese are never like, characters are difficult. The characters are like, here's like 300 characters. Learn them by next week. Your test is next Tuesday. Um, right? Yeah. So the attitude about characters was very different. It was very mm -hmm. interesting. Um, I actually really enjoy Chinese because it's, uh, it's very similar to English. Yes, it does help to learn Japanese ahead of time. But, you know, uh, I don't think it's necessary to, to learn a language before you go somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
if you want to explore a new culture or a new country, uh, you should just go because uh, you only live once and you should strike uh, uh, the iron while it's hot. I don't even know how to say it. That's correct. Is that correct? That okay, is correct. I'm, I'm, like, I'm always scared to use like English idioms because like, <laughs> I haven't been in America for a long time. It's like, is that the right idiom? Mm. In Japan, if you don't know Japanese well, you, t you, you tend to learn how to communicate in other ways, through body language, through compassion, through uh, food. We, we heard that today in, in the, in, in the uh, event that we attended, you know, the, how food was a way to reach and connect with people. So for me, coming here was about getting out of the Eurocentric, like Western paradigm, value paradigm, Chris, Judeo-Christian religious stuff, black, white dichotomy, this, and trying to get to just, you know, seeing what other human beings think on the planet and really kind of exploring the world around me uh, with a lot of curiosity. That's what brought me here. I've been here like three times. So the first time was in 1990. I had a little bit of trouble at school, had to leave. So I saved up $800, uh, actually 600. Which is how much in 2022? Yeah, I don't know how much, like <laughs> three times, four times amount. Sure. But it was like $600, 800 bought the ticket. Mm -hmm. 800 I had in my pocket and I flew to Japan with just that. Mm. Like I thought, I thought, I'm not gonna be able to stay very long with $800 because like, you know, if it's like $50 or $80 a day to stay someplace. Yeah. Yeah. But my dream was to see Japan. Mm. My dream wasn't to stay in Japan. So I thought, even if I go and I'm there for just like four days, cause I run out of money. I've been in Tokyo for four fucking days. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. And everything, you know, changed. I got there. An old classmate found me. He, taught, he called my mom. Back then, we didn't have internet. Mm -hmm. So he wrote my mom or called her. She told him where I was. They picked me up, took me to their home. I stayed with them for three months. Oh, I got a, nice. I got a, a part-time job. I was able to get an apartment. So I ended up staying for like six months. That wow. was, was originally only planned to be like a two-week trip. So I think a lot of people who watch the channel are part of the LGBTQ community who are thinking, yeah, it is hard to come to Japan mm -hmm. as a member of the queer community. How am I going to get a job? How am I going to to live there and be out? Probably, especially if you're from a country where you are already out. Right. Um, even, you know, Danny was talking about today, like having kind of to go back into the closet a little bit. That's right. right. He did. Yeah. When getting a job here. And so I think that that actually turns a lot of people off of Japan. But flip that, you know, around and we have these amazing events that you started and like can you talk about the importance of that and like why you wanted to talk sure. about that fruits and suits is a weird name fruits means gay person like you're a fruit it used to be pejorative but the australians who started the group turned it around to like take possession ownership of mm. the term and in suits is sort of a professional group so professional uh, queer people um i was in australia in the early 2000s i was taken to a fruits and suits event uh, it was amazing because it wasn't at the bars. It was men and women who were talking about the work that they do. I, I felt really like comfortable. I, I could talk to you know anybody about anything. It really kind of sort of transformed my way of socializing with other uh, queer people. So when I came back to Japan in 2000, uh, it was eight, 2009, there were a couple of guys from New York doing a Fruits and Suits type of event. They were doing it. They okay. called it Fruits and Suits and they were doing it. But it was just like casual, like, uh, you know, in the bar somewhere, meet up once every month. Mm -hmm. um, they went back to New York. It kind of stopped. For a long time, I thought, I need to really reboot this because there's no space in Tokyo for queer people to come together to network and to share what they're doing and to just communicate and connect. If you go out to the bars, it kind of focuses people on, if you say hello to somebody, they think, oh, maybe that person likes me or maybe that person's uh... kind of trying to like, uh, you know, be romantically connected to me. You know, the, the, the motives are all weird. And, and the apps now, people, you know, it's just, it's too confusing. Young people have a really difficult terrain to navigate because it's, it's just, you know, it's a, there's a lot of pressure uh, on how to connect. There's so many ways to connect. It's like what each way you connect means is really hard to navigate. So I started this space to give people a chance to connect without the pressure of trying to have sex or hook up and to talk about how to build a life in Japan. The first event, we, we invited a nonprofit for anti-bullying, anti-suicide, mm -hmm. uh, LGBT youth, mm -hmm. uh, suicide prevention uh, hotline. And we invited two members of parliament, parliament to talk about how the government of Japan was changing its direction on LGBT rights. We've come a long way over the last nine years. And I think 
So Fruits and Suits is a professional networking group that allows men and women and non-binary people, uh, cis, trans, it doesn't matter how you identify, to come together to talk about their work and to meet other people and connect. And then and that kind of turned into the Chamber of Commerce, which we are now uh, the international, uh, what is called the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce. So we now support queer owned businesses. That's super cool. Yeah, and so we, we give them a platform to connect with mm. big business for uh, RFPs, like requests for proposals, you know, they become a vendor for a big business. Probably a lot of people are watching thinking that there isn't much uh, of a place for queer people in Japan and yeah. Tokyo. What do you feel about yeah. that? Yeah, there's still some places in the world where it's dangerous to be gay. Mm. Japan is not a dangerous place to be if you're gay. It is not criminalized. Uh, of course, there's still some social stigma about being gay here, as there is in America, as there is in Europe. Uh, that doesn't change anywhere. So safe to be here, but can you be your authentic self here? If you are not Japanese, you're given a pass to be yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're Japanese, it's a bit more difficult. So mm -hmm. when we started Fruits and Suits 2014, a lot of Japan didn't even know what LGBT stood for. I think there's a report I read about the incidents or the appearance of the LGBT in media. Ah. So it was like like 150 times in all of Japanese media in 2014. Then it went to like 600 in 2015. Then it went to like 3,000 in 2016. Then it went to like 18,000. Wow. You know, so though if you look at sort of how many times this topic appears in media, it's dramatically changed and exploded over the last uh, 10 years. And I think there's an awareness uh, in Japan for diversity. Younger Japanese people are kind of okay with it. I think it's, I think it's changed a lot. I think people are more open. The workplace is also changing, uh, where people are making effort to say, look, you know, you get the same benefits. Like, there are a lot of companies that are saying same-sex partnerships get the same benefits as uh, heterosexual partnerships. In Japan now, same-sex partnership is not a law, but it covers like half the population mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. So you can get a piece of paper that says I'm with someone of the same sex and you can get your company to give you the same rights from welfare and benefits standpoint. If you find a, a company that has a right culture, a good culture, good colleagues, you can probably be yourself at that company just as easy as you could be in the US. And part of finding this then would be to join Fruits and Suits. Right, yeah, join Fruits and Suits. Right, yeah, yeah right. and then you could connect with other people yeah. who work at those companies and you can get first-hand knowledge of what's it like to be in Japan as a professional, mm -hmm. what, what it's like to work at that company. I think our group makes themselves available to talk to people about things. This is not only for foreigners though, right? So like- No, can, anybody. No, anybody, Japanese, so Japanese people. Oh, of course, them, Japanese right? people too, anybody. I think one of our, the pillars of our success is that we've always been very inclusive. From day one, We've never said anybody, and we, know we, are, we are gay forward. Okay. You know, like purse first. <laughs> purse first. Purse first, <laughs> purse first. We are, we are gay first, but we are not gay only. 30% of our membership are women. Lots of allies as Great. well. Before we wrap up everything, just one last quick question. If you have one piece of advice for people who want to come work in Japan or start their business in Japan, what will it be? Wow. I, I think if you, wanna, if you wanna come to Japan to work or live or to build your own business, um, start connecting with people in Japan. I know it's risky. Save a bit of money, buy a ticket, come to Tokyo, and start and hit the ground networking and talking to people. That's literally what I did. Yeah, yeah. And it's scary. It's scary. It's scary. But it's the best it way. It yeah. works. It works. I yeah. mean, don't be stupid. If you if you a stupid if you a stupid person, you'll uh, be going home. Stay home. Yeah. Stay home. Stay, we don't. No, I don't know. But like, you know, but but if you're smart. And you're, and you're uh, inter entrepreneurial and you are passionate, I think most people would welcome to find someone like that. And you have the network of our group mm -hmm. to, to lean mm -hmm. on for, for answers to questions. Depending on your country, uh, you know, you can come on a tourist visa and then find a company that can sponsor you if you get a job. If you are one of the Commonwealth countries, you can get a work or holiday you, visa and you can come and work for a year um, with, you know, easily. True. So I, I think explore your country of origins pathways to uh, work status here 
But if you are an American, uh, as we are, and you... Uh, he's not. Canadian. Oh, you're Canadian. That's right. That's right. Well, it's this thing we're all the same. You can do work holiday, you know? No, no, but I'm too old. You're too old. Yeah. Oh, that's right. She old. She old, so she, she had to come old. on okay. a tourist visa. Okay. Well, if you're young, you can do a work holiday. Come with, yes. I think even America has work holiday, too, now. Yeah. yeah. If you're under 28 yeah. or 30. But if you're older and you want to come, contact us at Foods and Suits. Yeah. Uh, we can support questions. We can introduce you to companies. I just connect people with people or others connect people with people and that's how you get a job. Mm. You know, if you are looking to come to Japan to work, Business Who's Tokyo is the community page. Join the page, tell people that you want to come to Tokyo. There's a whole network of 2,000 people who can support you in the process. Do people actually like write in and say, I'm living abroad, I don't know what to do? Yeah, they do, they do. Okay. We've even had five relationships happen. Uh, you no, know, I realized if I joined Fruiting Suits earlier, I probably is no longer single anymore, so. That's I, how we started the video, yeah. coming here to find a husband. I mean, everyone's <laughs> successful here, you know, entrepreneurs.